Doctors, we are live. Shall I? Please go ahead, doctor. Good morning, friends, and welcome. Yes, Brain Teasers is back with its season three. And here is the signature tune for you. And this is the first episode of season three. Yes, friends. So, welcome and very good morning to one and all. Yes, of course, Brain Teaser is back with its season three and that too on such an auspicious day of Teacher's Day. Let me introduce to the new participants and viewers to the concept of Brain Teasers. Brain Teaser is an edutainment initiative which was introduced two years back by Sarakshi Netrale. And last year, it became a live online quiz conducted once a month on a web-based platform. Also, it's no longer just a quiz, but much more. Increase your learning and knowledge, we have allergy. And to break the mundane, we have sections like ophthalmic humor, shiries from our own ophthalmic brilliance. Brain Teaser also had the privilege to conduct quiz along with national societies like Delhi Ophthalmological Society, Ocular Trauma Society of India, and Bombay Ophthalmic Association. The All India Postgraduate Quiz, which was conducted first ever in our country on our platform, was a lookout for a wizard PG of the country. And believe it, more than 125 teams were selected out of 350 postgraduate institutes for the zonals and which uh, we had then finals, semi-finals and finals. And this All India PG quiz just got concluded in the mid-June. Well, friends, today is the Teacher's Day. Teacher's Day is celebrated annually on September 5th to mark the birth anniversary of Dr. Sarvepalli Radhakrishnan, the first vice president and the second president and a philosopher. His contribution to shaping India's education is immense. I read somewhere, teaching is not just a job, it's a calling to. Teachers are holy angels leading their flocks or the students from the dark. So today all of us stand tall in our respective places because of our gurus and teacher. My sins pranam to all the gurus who have brought me to this level. Today, I have two prolific ophthalmologists and avid quiz masters as our co-host. Dr. Uma Kulkarni, she is a director, professor of ophthalmology at Yenopa Medical College, Mangalore. And another equally uh, avid quiz master is Dr. Anurag Mishra, who is a director of Radha Raman Hospital at Qatar. Yes, friends, we are available on Facebook and YouTube where we can retrieve even the previous uh, programs which we have conducted. Of course, nothing is possible without generous financial support of trade partners. This season, we are lucky to have Microvision as our new trade partners. Team Brain Teasers is indebted to Microvision and my special sincere thanks to Mr. Ashokan, who is Executive Vice President of my, uh, Microvision and Mr. Navneet, who is always a Mr. Yes Man. Sharing the mantle today, we have Dr. Shilpi as co my co-host. Request now Dr. Shilpi to familiarize the participants with the rules of the game. So good morning friends and welcome back. So this time, there is a little bit change in the quiz pattern. So I'm telling you the rules of the quiz. Yes, who can participate? All the ophthalmologists from PGs to practitioners. We have five sections with five questions in each section. 
format will be section one to four. It will be MCQ based round like previous one. But yes, section five will be a rapid fire round, which is a new addition to this season. So this is what the participants will see on the screen for round one to four. That is section one to four. Identify the character. This timer will play for twenty seconds, and you need to record your answer or response within twenty seconds. Like here, the answer is B. So. First, you need to press the B option, and after that, you should also press the Save button to record your response. Remember, once you record your response, you cannot change. So, assessment for section one to four will be it will be correct response, and the one who answers the fastest, that is fastest finger first. For the fifth round, that is the rapid fire round the section toppers of all the four sections will automatically qualifies for the fifth round and besides that there will be three more contestants who will play the rapid fire round and it will depend upon the cumulative performance of all the four sections we have five winners for this season and the cumulative performance of all the four sections plus the rapid fire round will decide the winners if there is a tie breaker bit for a pose for a uh, for any prize the three questions will be asked and the contestants with the maximum correct answer will qualify for the respective prize finally the decision of the host and the judges will be the final so what are the prizes in ascending Order the fifteen hundred rupees, two thousand, twenty five hundred. The runner up will get four thousand, and the winner will carry away five thousand rupees gift voucher. So attention, the section toppers and the three cumulative performers will be invited to come live for the rapid fire round. They will be sent a Zoom link so that they can play live. So toppers, keep your registered mobile on. and you need to log in as soon you get the call so now i invite dr anurag mishra sir he is a avid quiz master and is a director of radha raman hospital katak he has done his two long term fellowships in iwl and interior segment and pediatric ophthalmology and strabismus from aeh madurai he is an invited faculty for various society meetings he has performed more than 30 life surgeries so hand over to anurag mishra sir for the further proceedings thank you so much shilpi thank you so much uh, prashant sir for the opportunity um, is my screen visible to you all yes yes thank you sir um, good morning ladies and gentlemen Greetings and regards from the land of Lord Jagannath, and as has been mentioned by Prashant sir elaborately, we are very happy to see you all on this great day of Teachers Day. So we welcome you all to season three, episode one of Brain Teaser. This is a legacy which is going to carry on itself, no no matter what obstacles we face. The delicate relationship between a teacher and a student, or a teacher and his students, in plural. would be a sense the essence of this delicate relationship is obviously learning we pray we pay our obeisances to our teachers who have uh, really been uh, uh, trail blazers and market movers in all fields tau tau at their feet the legacy of learning continues this is no teacher student relationship in this brent teasers episode of course but the legacy of learning however should continue the show must go on at all costs So I welcome you all to season three, episode one, and section one of Brain Teasers. I hope all of you are ready, fingertips ready on the button to press as the questions come in. Question one, section one, episode one, season three, coming up on your screen. Look at this view carefully. The question is. Which view is this called? You've got four options. Option one, Miyake Steiner view. 
Option two, seen at Apple View. Option C, Miyake Apple View. Or option D, Elder Miyake View. Your time starts now. Time's up. I'm sure most of you would have got that right, but don't really make yourselves happy by thinking that you started off with an easy, easy question. There are more coming up from my co-host in particular. So the right answer to this question would be the Miyake Apple view. This is a view that is taken from the posterior aspect of the eye, and this is how the eye is prepared. The eye is kept on the table, and the videography machine is, is kept posterior to it, and it's used. this view is used to study the IOL behavior of cataract surgery by looking at it from the posterior aspect behind the iris inside the capsular bag. So that ends question number one. Let's go to question number two. Question number two is, this is the confocal microscopy of the cornea of a patient. You have the histopathological picture stained with Congo red. And you also have the HP picture stained with apple green birefringence. You must have known what condition is this, but that's not the question. The question is, which of the following is not a treatment option for this condition? Option A, DALK. Option B, DSEC. Option C, PTK. Or option D, PK. And your time starts now. Time's up. Let's look at the right option. The right option is option B, DSEC. This obviously, I think most of you would have got that right as to the diagnosis is concerned. This is a lattice dystrophy of the cornea, shows typical characteristic picture of amyloid deposits in the sub-basement membrane and superficial stroma plane. And that's the very reason why DSEC is not a treatment option. It involves the anterior stroma, epithelium, and basement membrane. DALC and PK are effective treatments, but recurrences are likely. So the patient should be explained that recurrences can happen in this condition. PTK is effective in delaying the specific strategy while we wait for a specific strategies like PK or DALC to be taken up. And DSEC, obviously, since it involves the deep anterior lamella, deep uh, corneal stroma, and the endothelium, is not a treatment option for lattice corneal dystrophy. That, that uh, brings us an end to question number two. Question number three of episode one, section one, coming up on your screen now. Look at this picture and tell us, what's this cataract called? You have four options. Option A, is it called cataracta centralis pulverilenta? B, cataracta cerulea? C, is it called cataracta sutura alba punctata? Or option D, is it called cataracta Palvurelenta Suchara Centralica. Your time starts now. All right, so there's a little bit of uh, confusion intentionally created for all of you. The right option, obviously, is cataracta centralis pulverulenta. It's a variant of cataracta cerulea or the blue dot cataract, but it has a dominant inheritance as opposed to the recessive inheritance of typical cerulea. It usually is non-progressive in contrast to cerulea, but it, since it involves the visual axis and is more central in nature, so it may require surgery at an early uh, at an early age, earlier age than cataracta cerulea does. That requires surgery only if it progresses. Otherwise, it's usually peripheral and does not affect vision to that great extent. So that concludes question number three. We go to question number four of this section. Uh, ages, we have, our life has been made easy with the specific substance called viscoelastics. Be a simple procedure or a complex one, without the presence of this in our fields and in our lives, life would have been miserable. 
for all of us to take up these cases under the microscope and bring out results which are optimal, which are the reasons for which the patients have come to us. The question here is obviously on that very important chemical substance that we use every day in our OTs. The question is, which was the first viscoelastic substance to be introduced into ophthalmic practice? The options are, option A, is it sodium glycuronate and n acetyl glucosamine? Is it option B, polyacrylamide? Option C, is it collagen type 4? Or option D, is it methyl cellulose? The clock starts ticking for all of you now. That it brings us to the end of the 20 seconds time interval. And the correct option out of these four is A, sodium glycuronate and N-acetyl glucosamine. The polysaccharide of these two molecules combined is otherwise known as hyaluronic acid. And that was the first viscoelastic substance which was introduced into ophthalmic practice, the space-forming, high-viscous, high-molecular weight viscoelastic. It was made available, uh, available commercially as Helon. It was with uh, Pfizer at that moment. And it was made from rooster comb. Before being used in cataract surgery, this part is interesting. This was actually not devised to be used as a viscoelastic substance for cataract surgery. When it was introduced by the company, their R&D has actually proposed it to be used as a vitreous substitute. So hyaluronic acid or sodium hyaluronate is the first viscoelastic substance that came into practice, came into ophthalmic practice. Question number five, which of the following alkali is most destructive when causes a chemical injury to the cornea? When causes a chemical injury to the cornea, which of the following alkali is most destructive? The four options that are there for you are A, lye, B, potassium hydroxide, C, ammonia, or is it D, Calcium hydroxide, Big Ben, start sticking now. All right, time's up. The right option out of the four options that have been given to you are, is C. Ammonia. Let's look at the explanation. Ammonia causes destruction. In fact, any alkali causes destruction of the cornea by causing saponification of the cell membrane lipids. That's how they break these cell membranes. That's how they cause destruction. That's how they penetrate really, really fast into the substance. The inflammation that's caused due to the exposure also triggers a chain of chemical events which just add insult to injury. Ammonia may reach the anterior chamber within 15 seconds. Now, that is fast if the exposure is heavy, of course. And ammonia is also pretty commonly found in our household uses. So be careful about any patient that's been exposed heavily to the effects of ammonia. Copious irrigation has to be done, obviously. But along with copious irrigation, you have to keep a check on the pH of the ocular surface every 10 to 15 minutes to ensure that the pH has actually travel to the acidic or both neutral um, side to neutralize the effect of the alkali exposure. So that brings us to the end of section one, but hang on, we are not finished with you all. We're just waiting for the marks to be computed and announce the section winner, while as we will play some trivia questions for all of you. So relax, you've all answered your questions that were important. Now answer some questions from the kaleidoscope. The kaleidoscope would be a quiz, a short section of a few questions after round one, three, and four, wherein the questions would be essentially on the eyes, but not concerning ophthalmology. So question number one out of the two trivias that we would be having at the end of this round is here on your screen. Listen to um, the song. I'm sorry, don't listen to the song. Just watch it. The clip has been muted. Don't try to raise the volume of your systems because the clip has been muted. 
and what you're witnessing is uh, social distancing personified. All right, so this handsome man's uh, Jimmy Shergill, along with him, what you see, uh, the other face you see is that of Rishita Bhatt. The question here is, read me out the lyrics of this song. What's the lyrics of this song? Aankhe hain ya tarbhuz ke dane. Aankhe bhi hoti hain dil ki zubaan. Nayan hain tore atom bomb. Is it option D? Nazar mein uski gazab ki badbu. Do we have a time slot for this? Yes, please. So this was a nice movie called Hassel, excellent composition by the duo of Jatin Lalit. And obviously the other lyrics do not have much of a meaning. So the lyrics of the song is Aankhe bhi hoti hain dil ke zuban, sung by Abhijit. Uh, uh, and Abhijit was one of the greatest singers of that era of course, and very nice melody uh, to the song as well. So that brings us to the second trivia question at the end of this round. The question is, which of these following animals, which of these following animals has two foveae in the retina? Your options are, option A, is it crocodile? Option B, is it falcon? Option C, is it the eagle? Or option D, is it the cobra? The time starts now. Right, so the right answer to this is the falcon. The falcon is one of the sharpest, uh, sharpest visions in the animal kingdom. Of course, all birds of prey, all birds of prey in the avian uh, sector, in the avian kingdom do have excellent vision. They can see almost six to eight feet deep in, in, into the snow. Uh, if their prey is covered with a thick uh, plate of snow as well, they can move, mark the movement to picture perfect precision. But falcon has two foveae for a different set of reasons. The two foveae are used to look at the front and the side portion. So they tremendously expand the visual field. The, the, the two foveae are spaced at 45 degrees to each other. And the one that looks at the side is actually used for seeing things at a long distance. So there's one that looks up front has more had, has more uh, I mean, precision in vision because that gives them the stereopsis, the three-dimensional vision. And the one that looks at the side is used to look at long distances to spot their prey. It's been told, it's been said by different animal or avian kingdom experts that they can spot their prey even from a distance of 2.5 kilometers, of course, if the weather is clear enough for them to see properly. So that brings us to the end of section one including the trivia. Are we ready with the topper? Do you have a name? Nikita Gupta from Chandigarh. Nikita uh, Gupta from Chandigarh, section one topper. Con congratulations. Keep on playing so that you can become a session winner as a section a session topper as well. So and, back to and, you. And Ritika is all set to join us in the last round for playing the rapid fire. So keep your fingers ready. Keep your mind ready for the rapid fire while keep on playing the other rounds as well. So that brings us to the end of section one, episode one, season three. The section two would be taken over by my co-host, uh, uh, Dr. Uma Kulkarni. And this is uh, who she is. You can see that there's a galaxy of uh, uh, dashes and bullets there. Her qualifications are four. She is a TOMS, she's a DNB, she's a PJ dip uh, in bioethics and medical ethics and PJ dip in clinical ethics. So. Um, I'm sure that she must be heading some, I mean, more than one ethical committees if that is allowed. Uh, she has a, 19 years of massive uh, teaching experience and she has 20 publications. Her key interests are research ethics, 
She has a five times PG, PG quiz master at Coscon, 12 times PG quiz. So she is definitely no minnow to the field. And we would see all that in the amazing battery of questions that she has amassed for all of us this morning. So over to you, Uma, ma'am. I'll stop sharing my screen. And Thank you, please Dr. carry on with the quiz. Thank you, Dr. Anurag. With the, those questions on um, Andrea's segment, now we move on to the second round. And this round is mainly going to focus on oculoplasty and orbit. And all the best to all of you. And keep your fingers on the uh, screen to ch uh, check the right answer for these questions which are going to follow. So the first question in section two is this. A 30-year-old man presented with proptosis on mastication. What is the most likely diagnosis? And the clue is in this scan. The options for you are option A, microphthalmos with cyst, B, dumbbell dermoid, C, dacryops, or D, neurofibroma. And your time starts now. And time's up, and I'm sure you've got the right answer there. And the right answer for this question is dumbbell dermoid. You can see this dermoid across the bone, across the suture over here. And that's the diagnosis for this condition. So you, as we know, dermoids are choristomas, normal tissues in abnormal sites. They occur most often at the lateral orbital rim but they can extend to the temporary area through the frontozygomatic suture. And that's when they can give, give rise to a dumbbell-shaped dermoid. And typical symptom in this type of a dermoid is diminished vision or diplopia or increased proptosis during mastication. That's because of the strain on the muscles um, during mastication. And the treatment, again, is as in any other dermoid, is surgical removal and trying to get it intact. And these pictures here are to show that the moids are not only placed here, but they can be present in many other tissues, including the limbus and also in the ovaries. So with that, are you ready for the next question? The ma'am, uh, sorry to interrupt you, ma'am. I think you have not shared the computer sound. That's why we could not hear the music when the timer was on. Okay, so... Uh, I think you just need to unshare a bit. Prashant sir, is it okay? She unshares and shares back because she has to play the team video as well. So, uh, I, I, Team video, yeah. We will have to play as well. Okay. I uh, think... The sound didn't come, is it? Yeah, yeah, yes. No, we could not hear it. Okay, one second. I'll just go back. I'm sorry for that. And uh, can Sai help me in uh, directing me how to do it? Sai? Then you have to unshare and share it again. Madam, no, not required, doctor. Okay. You, don't need to, no, you don't need to unshare and share. Okay. On, the top, uh, on the top, you will find a red color, small label, right? Which says, which says you are viewing. On the top, you have this. <clears throat> Madam, what do you see on the top? Uh, I'm seeing the remote control mute. Exactly. On the right hand side, you will have a drop down. Yes, drop down. Tap on good. that, you will see something called share computer sound. Share sound, yes. Exactly, that's all. Fine. Thank you so much. And sorry for that. Okay. So I'll share the screen again. And uh, this is your next question. This question is on this curve. This curve of severity against time in thyroid eye disease is caused, is called. It has two phases, dynamic phase and the static uh, phase as you are seeing here. And it's called A, Rundle's curve. D, B, Dalrymple's curve, C, Werner's curve, or D, Graves' curve. So your time starts now. I'm 
sure you've got this one also. And the answer is Rundle's curve. So this describes how uh, the progression of thyroid eye disease occurs. Most of the time, it is self-limiting, as we know, ranging uh, in time duration between one and three years, and it's more prolonged in smokers. During the active stage, you see all the uh, inflammatory signs, whereas in the quiescent stage, burnout stage, you may see proptosis and other signs, but there's no active inflammatory signs. So there can be reactivation in five to 10% of cases over lifetime, and these are the so many signs that I've put together Dalrymple's, Mobius, Graphase, G4, and so many signs that we know. And the severity scoring systems are there, VISA and the clinical activity scores, which we are well versed with. So with that, we go to the next question. And let's see what's the next question, third question. It is on this. Look at this image of this boy carefully. This is a type, the type of epicanthus seen in blepharophimosis syndrome is, this is a case of blepharophimosis syndrome and the child has epicanthus. Name the type of epicanthus. Is it A, epicanthus supraciliaris or is it B, epicanthus tarsalis or is it C, epicanthus palpebralis or D, epicanthus inversus? Your time starts now. <music> I'm sure this was again an easy question and the answer is epicanthus inversus. So uh, we have different types of epicanthus. Epicanthus is basically a semilunar fold of conjunctiva at the medial canthus, usually vertically oriented. It's a very common eyelid abnormality associated with blepharophimosis and many other syndromes like Down syndrome or congenital ptosis or, or some others. Sometimes it can be isolated. So it gives rise to an appearance of isotropia. So we classify one of the causes to rule out in uh, iso pseudoisotropia. And it should be dis differentiated with, uh, from epiblepharon, wherein it's a horizontal fold of both muscle and skin, which is seen in the last diagram here. And these are the different types of epicanthus that we see. So with that, we go to the next question. That's the fourth question. And look at these images very carefully. There are three images given here. Spot the diagnosis. Is it A, eyelid imbrication syndrome? Or is it B, floppy eyelid syndrome? Or is it C, dermatocalysis? Or is it D, blepharocalysis? And your time starts now. <music> Excellent. So we go to the answers and this, I'm sure you've got this also right. And the answer is floppy eyelid syndrome. So we go to this picture again. So what is floppy eyelid sy syndrome? We know that there's a lot of elastin in the tarsal plate and therefore the eyelids are easily avertible. And the lids are very flaccid and you can, you can actually fold them like this. And there's eyelash ptosis and there's loss of parallelism of the eyelashes. So uh, many times when the patients are, it's, uh, the condition is associated with sleep apnea or prone sleeping, uh, patients, the eyelid, the tarsal conjunctiva expo is exposed and it's ru it rubs against the pillow when the patient is sleeping prone and therefore causes this chronic papillary conjunctivitis. It's also associated with obesity and hyperglycemia. Whereas this is eyelid imbrication syndrome in which there's a lax upper eyelid that overrides the uh, lower eyelid. So this upper eyelid is overlapping the uh, lower eyelid and therefore it causes irritation of the tarsal conjunctiva. So with these uh, conditions, we move ahead with the last question of this section and look at this diagram with this picture very carefully. Look at this flap, which is there. It's a lower lid eyelid reconstruction using upper eyelid tarsal conjunctival graft. So what do you name this flap as? Is it mustard's flap or is it modified Hughes flap 
or is it cutler beer flap or is it a tensile flap and your time starts now And maybe this was a little difficult for those who are not exposed to uh, oculoplasty surgeries, but the answer is modified Hughes flap. So this is the modified Hughes flap where there's eyelid sharing procedure for lower eyelids. So when the lower eyelid is lost, the upper tarsoconjunctival tissue is taken from the upper eyelid and it gives rise to that flap which you saw in that picture, which is retained for some time till it gets vascularized and then it is separated. So that was modified Hughes flap. In contrast, cutler beard is the one where upper eyelid is reconstructed using lower eyelid. So this is cutler beard. This is tensile flap, which is a tarsoconjunctival rotation flap. And this is mustard cheek uh, rotation flap. With that, uh, we come to the end of these five questions on orbit and oculoplasty. And now we have a team introduction. So shall I play the video? Yes, ma'am. Yes. So enjoy this video. D E A G M. When I say team, you say work. Team, 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 team. Hand in hand, when we work together, it's teamwork, and that makes things better. When I help you and you help me, we're like players on the same team, working together. Everybody wins, and teamwork helps you make new friends. The work goes faster when we sing songs. So and sing along T E A T M When I say team, you say work Team, 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 team T E A T M When I say team, you say work Team, 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 team When you're in a team, it's always fun You know there's two heads are better than one To cooperate is really great People on your team are called your team as a group, you can achieve your wildest dreams. Work together because there's no I in team. Doesn't matter who's last and who's first, as long as everybody provides the teamwork. P E A M. When I say team, you say work. Team, 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 team. E A M. When I say team, you say work. Team, team. That's a wonderful video of the teamwork and I'm sure all of them are contributing, but I think the most, or uh, you can say most significant contribution is by Dr. Prashanta and Dr. Shilpi and we must all be thankful to them for this. And uh, with that, I think I hand over to uh, Dr. Anurag for the next round. Yeah, I can, uh, it's my, uh, I would announce the section two winner, uh, section two topper. It is Dr. Sadanand Shetty from Bangalore. Congratulations, Dr. Kirti. You should log in on the Zoom platform at the conclusion of uh, this particular four rounds so that we will be playing rapid fire round uh, with you. Congratulations once more. Over to you, Anurag. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Uma Man, uh, for uh, the uh, wonderful round that we've just had. Excellent questions and congratulations to the section topper. Nice tune in the end to finish things off. Uh, off really, I almost got up from my chair and started dancing to the tune of that wonderful tune. Very nice selection. I am proud of our team. We all are proud of the team. And let's put this to work even further. Right over. Section three. Session, session, um, section three, season three, episode one of Brin uh, teasers coming up right over. I'm so sorry. I should have advanced the slides along with uh, Uma Ma'am. I didn't do that. Just hang on a second, please. All right. 
So section three, question number one, coming up for all of you. I hope you are at the ready. Which of the following is not true regarding Burian Francis Chetty type of isotropia? I think I, I think I, you all must be exposed to this already. Your options are, which of the following is not true, mind you? The four options are A, psychological stress may be associated. Option B, it is committed. Number C, moderate myopia is associated with the condition. Or is it option D, accommodation is minimal? Your time starts now. Right, so Burian Francis Chetty type of isotropia is a non accommodative variety, as we all know. So the accommodation has to be minimal. It is a committant type of strabismus. There is an element of psychological stress that may be associated along with many other factors. So the right option is moderate, uh, option C, moderate myopia is associated. On the contrary, it is the moderate hyperopia that is associated with uh, this condition. At times, we might see this and might confuse this with an accommodative type of isotropia, but cycloplegia or correction of the hyper hyperopia does not take it away. So this is a type 2 non-accommodative. There are three types, as we know. Type 1 and type 3. Type 3 is Belchowski. Type 1 is Swan. So all of these are seen in the uh, early childhood, and all of them are essentially non accommodative committant isotropias, and there's no apparent cause that can be singled out. So that's question number one for you and its answer and its explanations. Coming up, question number two on your screen now. Paradoxical pupil is seen in option A, congenital achromatopsia, option B, congenital nystagmus, option C, congenital stationary night blindness, or is it option D, all of the above, the clock starts ticking now. Understanding the concept of paradoxical pupil is rather easy. You take the patient to a lighter environment, the pupil first dilates and then constricts. You take him to the darkened environment, it dilates first, it constricts first and then dilates. It's essentially a defect of the bipolar cells in the retina. And the correct option is it is seen in all of the above conditions. So it is, uh, it tells you what it means and is associated with the disorder of the retinal bipolar cells. It's seen in all of these conditions and a few other conditions as well, like the labels congenital amaurosis. Of course, labels congenital amaurosis has got certain clinching uh, presentations from the patients like the ocular digital reflex, and you have very characteristic appearance of the retina and the optic atrophy sets in rapidly, uh, but dominant optic atrophy, LCA, and all these uh, with potentially or relatively trivial conditions also lead to a paradoxical pupil to be elicited in the eye. So that concludes question number two. Coming up is question number three. Which of the following is characteristic of an entity called Duane's retraction syndrome type four? Your options are option A, abduction limitation, option B, synergistic divergence, option C, face turn to the affected side, or D, small angle isotropia. Your time starts now. Just like any morphological pattern of DRS, the DRS type 4 is also a co-contraction syndrome. However, it presents with exotropia. So small angle exotropia is not what it presents with. It presents with adduction limitation and not abduction. 
The phase turn, obviously, if the eye is exotropic, would be towards the opposite side to maintain binocularity. So obviously, the only thing that's left out is synergistic divergence, and it is a characteristic and diagnosis clinching uh, uh, morphology of the DRS type 4. So this is also a co-contraction syndrome. Adduction is limited. Synergistic divergence is essentially when the eye starts to look at the opposite side, the contralateral side, that occurs a synergistic diversion because the innervation flows to lateral rectus of both sides from the oculometer nerve. Very interesting. So that concludes question number three. I hope you got the explanations right. Read about it more if you're interested. Question number four, which of the following is not true concerning hemifacial spasm? You know, hemifacial space, spasm is. So which of the following bullet points is not true concerning this medical entity? Option A, it exclusively affects one half of the face. Option B, it's caused by an artery touching the facial nerve is the, is the cause. C, it may be triggered by anxiety or stress. Or D, it starts from a pitch from the eyelid. The thinnest hand of the clock starts moving now. All right, so uh, hemifacial spasm, as we know, is a is a forceful contraction of the facial muscles. It's very disturbing to the patient. It's usually caused by an artery which touches the facial nerve and causes its contraction violently. It may be triggered by anxiety or stress and a lot of other factors which act as a precipitating ones. There's a twitch that affects the facial muscles and usually starts from the eyelid. However, though it's called hemifacial, it is not exclusively affecting one half of the face. When the condition uh, progresses or stays for a longer period, it might affect into it might affect the other side as well. So it is likely to affect both sides, although it's not very common, but it does affect both sides at times. The problem with this condition is the intermittency with which the hemifacial contraction happens or both sides uh, contraction happens might just get transformed into constancy with time as things uh, go on with age. So it is triggered by anxiety, stress, or even fatigue, but it is not exclusively concerning or restricted to one half of the face is the answer. So that brings us to the last question of uh, section three, uh, season three and episode one of Brain Teasers. Each millimeter of eccentricity of the corneal light reflex on Hirschberg's test transforms into how much in degrees? Your four options are five degrees, 3.5 degrees, 7.5 degrees, 7 degrees. I have 20 seconds to answer this simple question. Trabismologists usually do not measure deviations in, form, in the form of degrees. That's not the way of expressing things. But when we are taught about this thing primarily, we are always told that if the Hirschberg's reflex falls right at the dot, the, dot uh, the center of the cornea, it is zero. When it falls on the limbus, it is 45. And if it's in between the limbus and the center of the cornea, it is 30 degrees. And you have six millimeters as the radius of the cornea. So if you divide 45 degrees by six, what you get is 7.5 degrees. So each millimeter's eccentricity of the corneal light reflex on Hirschberg's test transforms into 7.5 degrees of deviation. So that concludes section three in, form, in the form of brain teasers of thermic phase. Now we go to this set of trivias as the marks would be computed and we would have our uh, section winner. So first of these questions coming up your way now. What is the ophthalmic condition that Mark Zuckerberg is rumored to have? Atypical RP. Is it mild anisometropic amblyopia? Red-green colored blindness? Or does he have recurrent sty? Your time starts now. Good 
never have full proof evidence to the secrets of these uh, uh, market movers of course that is the reason why he has been rumored to have a red green color blindness and it has been speculated because everything you see on facebook is blue on white or white on blue so he keeps saying that blue is the richest of the colors it might not be anything but we have reasons to believe that he has, has said this so many times that he perhaps has a red green color blindness since blue is the only color out of the primary colors that he appreciates well right so the next question in the trivia trivia section is which of the following animals has the best color vision i repeat which of the following animals has the best color vision and your options are option a the russell's viper option b are the wild boars which, which have the best color vision in the animal kingdom is it the mantis shrimp or option d is it the giant squid your time starts now We all know that uh, snakes, vipers, or otherwise, they really do not see colors. They just look at the warmth, the temperature signatures that come from the body of their potential prey. The giant squid has the largest of the eyes in the animal kingdom, of course. But what it lacks is the number or the types of cones which are responsible for color vision. So the correct answer is the mantis shrimp. And here is the animal. It's a very colorful, beautiful animal that rests at the bottom. the sea rocks of the sea and these are the two eyes that protrude and it has a staggering 16 cones as against three in humans so we can perhaps never know uh, uh, how the mantis shrimp appreciates what i mean how different is it from how we appreciate things in terms of colors they must be appreciating a range of colors and the world must be so much more beautiful to them than it is to us so that concludes uh, section 3 uh, and who's the topper Yes, it's Kanchani Gupta from New Delhi. Congratulations, Dr. Kanchani. Be ready to log in. You will be getting a message shortly on your registered mobile. So do log in to, uh, on a Zoom platform. Okay, so it's heartening to see that we have different people topping different sections, and we must be seeing hundreds of participants faring well in each section as we progress. So it's back to Uma Ma'am for section four uh, now. Yes, right here. so thank you very much for that wonderful round and we now go to the fourth round and the fourth round is going to concentrate on the posterior segment and here we have the first question in the fourth round and that is this it's a very basic question and you can see some clues over here which cell in the eye are the clues referring to there are so many clues here gaba interneuron internuclear layer uh, sorry inner nuclear layer no axis starburst only dendrites so the answers options are a amacrine cells b bipolar cells c horizontal cells or d muller cells so which cell in the eye are the clues referring to your time starts now <laughs> Wonderful. We start with a very easy question this round, and as you know, the answer is amacrine cells. So something about these amacrine cells—they were described by Kahal. It was assumed that they didn't have axons and everything was only dendrite, and that's why the name. They are interneurons located in the inner nuclear layer, and they function in the plexiform layer, inner plexiform layer, through their connections with the rods and cones. and they have several shapes and starburst is one they form indirect connections between the bipolar cells and the ganglion cells not the nerve cells the, they they play a critical role in detecting change in what we see so they secrete gaba and they inhibit the cones and these are the different forms of 
um, the amacrine cells which have been described and uh, the starburst is a very beautiful uh, cell if you like to see these uh, pictures of the starburst cells. So that was the answer. The answer was amacrine cells. Hope you got it right. So the next question in this round is this. So since we are all fond of animals, birds, this is something for us. Kingfisher, kite, kestrel, hawk, harrier. These are not birds, but for an ophthalmologist, there are all names of clinical trials. Which drug has been commonly studied in these studies? The answers are A, aflibercept, B, brolucizumab, C, farisimab, or D, rho kinase inhibitors. Your time starts now. Yes, and there we are. And the answer for this question is brolucizumab. And let's try to see a little more about this. It's an anti-VEGF agent. It's a humanized single chain antibody fragment. Compared to the other drugs, that is aflibercept and ranimizumab, it's a very small molecule. And therefore, compared to them, there is an enhanced tissue penetration, clearance, and drug deliveries. So the, the birds that we were talking of were Harrier and Hawk. These are studies for wet ARMD. These are phase three clinical trials with this drug, which showed a very positive response. And therefore, it has been approved by the FDA for this, for this indication. Whereas Kite, Kestrel, and Kingfisher are studies of this drug for diabetic retinopathy and diabetic macular edema. These are currently going on studies, phase three studies. The only risk factor that everyone is talking about with respect to this drug is the risk of occlusive vasculitis and blindness. So let's wait and see what this drug is going to give us. With that, we go to the next question, the third question, and the question is like this. This, are, this is a method of examination of the intraocular uh, structures. About this method of intraocular endoscopic visualization, I give one clue there. Which of the following is true? The options are A, stereoscopic view. B, it has a wide field of view. C, it has an inbuilt magnifying lens system. Or D, it is useful when the media is hazy. Which of the following is true? Your time starts now. Yes, and the answer is hmm. it's useful when media is hazy. And this is a method of examination, which is called intraocular endoscopic visualization. It's helpful for posterior segment examination when the media is hazy, when there's a corneal opacity or there's lens opacity or even in endophthalmitis. It has no stereoscopic view. It has a very restricted field of view, 30 to just 50 degrees. It has no inbuilt magnification system. However, the field of view, the stereoscopic view, and the magnification can be slightly adjusted by moving the endoscope within the eye closer or away from the structure so that you can have a better view. It's useful in visualizing structures which are not normally visible by the bio, and just, uh, just like the retroiridial structures or the retrolental structures or anterior retinal structures. So it's used for procedures like endocyclophotocoagulation and endoscopic vitrectomies, et cetera. And however, there are newer advances with 3D stereoscopic lenses incorporated along with this. So this is about intraocular endoscopic visualization. So we move on. I hope you got this right. We move on to okay. the fourth question of this okay. round. And that, and the question is here, which of the following drugs tried in a chronic central serous retinopathy has specific anti-mineralocorticoid activity, central serous retinopathy? The options are A, spironolactone, B, mifeprestone, C, eplerinone, 
or D brinzolamide. The time starts now. is up. All these four drugs have been used in chronic CSR, but the drug which has a an specific anti-mineralic corticoid activity is eplenone. Spironolactone also has got anti-mineralic corticoid activity, but it's not very specific. So uh, this is the answer for that. There are in uh, chronic CSR, especially the chronic CSR conditions, there's an upregulation of mineralocorticoid receptors in the choroidal endothelial cells. And this drug has got a very specific activity against these receptors. It's given, it has been tried in the dosage of 25 to 50 milligrams per day for with the six weeks follow up data at all. So we have to wait and watch how good it's going to be in treating our chronic CSR patients. So it has. Uh, similar side effects as uh, spironolactone, but probably it will prove to be a better drug. So with that, we move on to the last question of this round. And you can see some classification here from stage one to stage five. Stage one says atrophy, stage two says shunt, stage three says CFAN, new vascularization, stage four says vitreous hemorrhage, and stage five says tractional retinal detachment. The question is not what this condition is, but who gave this classification? And your options are A, Morton F. Goldberg, B, Edaman, C, Henry Eels, or D, John Donald McIntyre. What's your answer? Your time charts now. We all got it right, and the answer is Morton Goldberg. So he was the person who described this condition. And let's know something about him. This is him, and he's a Joseph Green professor at Wilmer Eye Institute, Johns Hopkins, and he's specialized in genetic eye diseases and sickle cell retinopathy. And we know about sickle cell anemia as a single nucleotide mutation at position six in the beta chain of the hemoglobin uh, the molecule, and gives rise to a lot of problems gives rise to sickle cell trait if it's heterozygous and sickle cell disease if it's homozygous. The main concern for the ophthalmologist is we see a lot of cases of vaso-occlusive retinopathies, sickle cell retinopathy uh, in such patients. And they often have complications like neovascularization and uh, vitreous hemorrhage. So this is one of those signs, sal salmon patch and fan retinopathy that we are seeing. And some sickling happening here causing vasoactivism uh, retinopathy. So with that, we go ahead uh, with the next uh, session. That is, before we get the uh, uh, winner for the fourth round, we have a commercial break. And I hand over to Shilpi for the commercial break. Same. Thank you, Uma, Madam. Uh, thank you for conducting the last part so well. Well, friends, <clears throat> nothing is possible in this world without a generous fi financial support. And we are really fortunate to have financial support. This season is being sponsored by Microvisions. And this is a small commercial video on behalf of them.
I think I'll, okay, one more. Eh? Extra Lube, tear substitute, is a specialized formulation for managing hyperosmolarity involved in dry eye by providing extra care. Lubrication. Osmo protection. Extra Lube contains carboxymethyl cellulose, 0.5%, glycerine, L-carnitine, Erythritol. So friends, all the ingredients of extra lube provides lubrication and osmo protection. Extra lube is the ideal solution for lubricating and protecting eyes with dry eye. So with long screen time, you do need, every one of us needs extra lube. So friends do use it. This is the sponsor for us. And over to you now, uh, Anurag. And uh, meanwhile, I will announce the section four winner. It is Dr. Venkat Subramaniam from Bangalore. Congratulations. You have topped the section four. So get ready to join us on the Zoom platform for, for playing the rapid fire round. Meanwhile, the trivias are being played. We are computing the results for overall uh, section top uh, session toppers, and we'll be coming interrupting in between the trivias. So be watchful. Anurag. And careful too. While you grab your cup of coffee, uh, may not be for the first time since the morning, but I think all of you would have taken a break from your routine work, and I think it's uh, going great guns for all of you this Sunday morning on Teachers' Day. We have a, a very diffuse presentation uh, of the uh, postgraduates or whoever they are, ophthalmologists from across the country, as the um, as the location uh, services suggest us. So we're eagerly waiting to meet all of you in a few moments from now, while we play a certain trivias and try to explore the kaleidoscope concerning the eyes and not ophthalmology. Let's explore a little more into that while marks have been computed. The first question out of these uh, two or three questions we have for you before we get down to business again is here. Which of the following animals is more prone to cataract formation as has been seen? Option A, dogs. Option B, cat. Option C, is it the elephant? Or is it option D, the horse? Your time starts now. You know, interestingly, across the globe, the maximum uh, number of cataract surgeries that have been that have been tried on animals is, has actually happened on elephants, contrary to popular belief. Uh, it's a it's a Herculean task to put the elephant into sleep by in inducing anesthetics and then do the cataract surgery. But experimentally, the cataract surgery has been done successfully on a lot of elephants across the globe. However, the animal that's more prone to cataract formation is dogs, because it's been seen that we have studied the, uh, the uh, structure and the uh, uh, non-permeability of the lens capsules in all these animals. And it's been found that the dog lens capsule is more permeable than the other animals. So when the dog ages, I mean, a lot of us have pets and we see that when the dog ages and starts getting old, the first thing that's affected perhaps is the vision. The dog's not very active because it cannot see properly. And uh, I don't know whether it's likely to be diagnosed with shining just a torchlight onto the eyes, but uh, the lens capsule sense is more permeable. Dogs are more prone to develop cataracts than the other animals in this list in particular. Moving Anurag, on. 
Then, Anurag, yes, sir. Can I interrupt? Yes, because I have a pleasant duty, duty to inform who are the session toppers for all Absolutely, the cumulative yes. toppers. So it's Ananya Goswami from Delhi. Congratulations, Ananya. Shalin Shah again from Delhi, and Dr. Bainjan from Chandigarh. So these three people are the overall cumulative toppers of if we put the marks together of all the four sections. So all the four section winners and these three session toppers are supposed to join us immediately on the Zoom platform so that we can play a rapid fire round with them. Please go ahead. And the uh, link has been sent to them already? Yeah, it has been sent to them on their mail and they will also be. All right. Here. All right, doctor. So we all are eagerly waiting to meet you all. Please log in as quickly as we can. And uh, we just move on to the next trivia. Watch this video clip first and then we come to the question. Alright, so this is a very hilarious clip from the movie called Hasina Manja. I gave David Dhawan, Govinda and Karishma Kapoor trio and it was some time that they run the show, ran the show and it was their era. The question is, Govinda was obviously feigning to be blind, but he was holding a stick. So what is the blind man's stick called? You have four options. Option A, is it called the Hoover cane? Is it called the Douglas cane? Is it called the Elder cane? Or is the blind man's cane called the Max cane? Your time starts now. Very essential device that we get to see in the hands of the uh, unfortunately blind people that we have the company of and it's called the Hoover scheme which came actually after its designer who was Dr. Richard Hoover who himself was definitely eyed but he did a lot of uh, he made a lot of contributions to the blind man's world. It's a basically white in color but it also has black strips down below to designate or differentiate the completely blind from the partially blind. So if you have if there's a complete if you have a man holding a completely white stick, then the person is completely blind. If the stick is white with dark uh, a dark shaded zone right at the bottom, then you understand that the person is partially blind. So it's also color coded according to that, and uh, it's a significant contribution. We all know the moment we see one holding the stick and we assist him or her to get across the road or as the case may be. So it's uh, uh, more of an identification and it also helps them to get the tactile feedback of what lies ahead of them while they walk on the street. So very essential, very simple invention, but very essential and very useful indeed. That brings us to the next question on the trivia section. Which of the following famous personalities is not, is not an ophthalmologist? Your options are option A, Socrates, Option B, Robin Cook. Option, option C, Duke Elder. Or option D, Wolfgang Heiges. Your time starts now. By Socrates, I obviously did not mean Socrates the philosopher. By Socrates, what was meant was Socrates the footballer. He was a Brazilian footballer who represented Brazil in two World Cups back to back. He was a defender 
and was a very good defender as well. He was a qualified ophthalmologist. So was Robin Cook, a famous novelist of coma, contagion. We, the book made a lot of name at the initial periods when COVID starts ripping the world apart. We all know the textbook by Duke Elder Sufi obviously was an ophthalmologist. The man who has made a significant contribution to the ophthalmic field in terms of his formula called Heige's formula, which was one of the most accurate formulas. If you feed in the parameters that it requires before the Paris Universal 2 came in, Dr. Wolfgang Heiges was actually a physicist and not an ophthalmologist, a German physicist who came up with one of the best, most acknowledged IOL calculation formula that we have been exposed to. So he is the one who is not an ophthalmologist out of these uh, four options. So I think that concludes uh, the, the trivia section. Uh, do, do we have people joining us? Yes. Yes, Anurag. Thank you for wonderfully conducting the trivia and keeping the uh, audience spellbound. Okay, so now we have most of the people who have joined with us. So Dr. Nikita, Dr. Uh, Sadanan Shetty, Dr. Panchami, Dr. Venkat, uh, Venkat Subramaniam, Dr. Ananya, Dr. Shalin Shah, and Dr. Benjan. Mm -hmm. Can you just get your audio as well as video inputs on? So we can have a look at the people who played so well today and have made it into the final rapid fire round. Yeah. And Dr. Sadhanan Shetty, you are supposed to log in from only one account. Uh, yes. Okay. Are you there with us? So, Sai, I think uh, Dr. Shalin Shah, has he joined? Sai? He'll be joining any moment. I just spoke to her. Okay. 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 I think so. It's time for us to go to the final round that is going to be the rapid fire round. And we will be beginning with the same way uh, we have been doing like uh, in the previous PG quiz as well. So let me share my screen first. Sorry, I, I should have forwarded. No issues. Give me a time. Okay. So friends, this lucky pe five, seven people, remember, we have five prizes to win. We are already Dr. Shilpi has briefed you about the prizes. So we will be playing with first section winner. And the first section winner, the rapid fire format is going to be like this. Every contestant gets 30 seconds and he has five questions maximum. He has to answer all the five questions within 30 seconds. If you delve upon any of the questions for a longer period of time, you will be exhausting on valuable 30 seconds, which are in all total you have. Remember, when you answer the questions, correct response fetches plus 10 marks, while an incorrect response gives you minus five. I hope... Everyone is, uh, I'm loudly clear for every one of you. Can you answer me? Yes. All yes, the yes. Okay, fine. So now first we'll be playing yes, with the section one winner. I would request all the other participants to just mute their audio as well as video. I would request only Nikita to get her audio as well as video input on. Are you re ready with us, Nikita? Yes, sir. Okay. So you have 30 seconds, you have maximum of five questions. So be fast, but be accurate as well. Here starts your 30 seconds. Which study approved use of dexamethasone intravitreal implant for treatment of macular edema secondary to CRVO? Uh, Geneva. Correct. Central connected tissue that covers the non-myelinated fiber of optic disc on the visual vitreal side. Uh, pass. Okay. Ocular cicatricial pempigoid in is which type of hypersensitivity reaction? Uh, four. Wrong. Wrong. Last question. In dystichiasis, eyelashes arise from dashed glands. Mole. Wrong. Okay. So uh, you attempted only four questions. Out of that, one was right and two were wrong. 
and one more. Yeah, after thirty seconds, only four questions were. Yeah, so can I make the last? Played it slow, uh, Nikita. I I did warn you that you have only thirty seconds within which you are supposed to attempt all the five. Okay, if you del delve upon one particular question for a more longer time, you lose upon your precious thirty seconds. Fine. What was your fifth question? You will not be marked for it. Let's play with. Based on SRK two formula, dash percentage of under correction of IL is noticed. You can attempt it, though you will not be given marks. Nikita. Ten. Hello. Ten. Wrong. Okay. So let's see the answer. It's for all the party benefit of all the participants. Which study approved use of dexamethasone in intravitreal implant for treatment of macular edema secondary to CRBO? It is Geneva study. Central connective tissue that covers non-myelinated fibers of the optic disc on the vitreal side is called meniscus of Kunt. Ocular cicatricial pepigoid is type two type of a hypersensitivity reaction. In distic acids, eyelashes arise from the meibomian glands, and based on SRK two formula, twenty percent of under correction of oil power is done in less than six months of age. I'm sorry that question was not fully displayed, but otherwise also we had run through. So thank you, Nikita, for being with us. Now hold on. Now you can put your audio as well as video off and wait for the final results. Section two winner. Is Dr. Sadanand Shetty, Dr. Sadanand Shetty? Yes, are you there with us? Yes, sir. Okay, wait for a while. Yeah, Sadanand, can yes. you tell me a, a very briefly about you? Yeah, I'm What basically you? Uh, from Udupi, Karnataka, and I'm a consultant in NN Bangalore. Oh, Dr. Sadanand, so you are giving a tough competition to the postgraduates. Great. Okay, so here are your thirty seconds. You can play now. Early vitrectomy has beneficial role in severe vitreous hemorrhage in type one diabetics compared to type two diabetic. Was concluded in which study? Was okay. Most common inheritance of microcornea is autosomal dominant. Correct. Mechanism of action of mermetin in treatment of glaucoma. Mermetin. Neural protection. Protection. Correct. Tapering of veins on either side of the crossing in hypertensive retinopathy. Salus sign wrong. McKellen classification is used for us. Okay, fine. Well, you played well. You played all. You attempted all the five questions. You answered correctly two. Two you passed, and one was wrong. So let uh, for the benefit of other participants and viewers, these are the answers. Early vitrectomy has a beneficial role in severe vitreous hemorrhage in type one diabetics compared to type two diabetics. Was concluded in which study? That was a DRVS study, and most common inheritance of for microcornea is autosomal dominant. While mechanism of action of memantin in treatment of glaucoma is neuroprotective, and tapering of vein on the either side of crossing in hypertensive retinopathy is called gun sign. While McKellen classification is used for trachoma. Well played, uh, Dr. Sadanan. Uh, so you can now mute your video as well as audio and now we will be moving to the next section 3 winner that is dr panchami gupta dr panchami are you there with us yes sir so can you tell me briefly about yourself sir i have done my post graduation from gmc chandigarh and now i am a practicing ophthalmologist in a government hospital in delhi since how long sir what since how sir, long since 4 after? years since 4 years so one more A person who is competing with the postgraduates, great. Keep it up. So here starts your next thirty seconds. Role of grid laser in BRVO is established by which study? Uh, so BVOS uh, BRVO uh, branch Correct. vein ocular pigment deposits at in insertion of zonules into posterior surface is called as. Uh, which line? You can say pass. So pass. So pass. 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 Corneal opacity with corne corneal lenticular adhesion is type. So type three. Wrong. Type of diplopia in superior oblique palsy. You have exhausted your time, but I give you next five seconds. So right. Uh, so okay. Fine. And the last. Vertical diplopia. 
no you uh, off your time so this fog is zoom. you can see theek hai okay headlight in fog appearance is seen in fog zoom right. correct so if you look at it uh, you attempt uh, you only attempt within 30 seconds four questions three questions sorry uh, how many are right one right one Uh, one one question you answered right. One was passed and one was wrong. Okay, well played, Doctor Panchami Gupta. Now we invite Do uh, Section Four winner, Doctor Venkat Subramaniam from Bangalore. Doctor Venkat Subramaniam, are you there with us? Yes, sir. Very much. Okay. Huh. Can you tell me about uh, yourself a bit? Two lines. Yeah. Uh, I am a practicing uh, retinologist and a general ophthalmologist too. I have my own hospital, Rang Lakshmi Netralia, in Bangalore. Since how long are you into practice? Fifteen years. Wow, great! Another practitioner is competing with the postgraduates, young Turks. Great, great. A salute to you. So, first question: Loss of which chromosome in choroidal melanoma is risk for poor metastatic survival? Pass, pass. Two. Double frequency, that is ND YAG 532 nanometer, is used selectively to target dash cells in trabecular meshwork. Mm, pass. Okay. Sclerocornea is up to dash percentage bilateral. Twenty percent. Wrong. Involvement of which structure differentiates endophthalmitis from panophthalmitis? Sclera. Correct. In his chart, each small square on the grid subtends angle dash degree at working distance of dash centimeter. You have exhausted your thirty seconds, but I give you next five seconds. Uh, is it thirty uh, degree at five at thirty uh, centimeters? Sorry, sorry, it's a wrong answer. So let me tell you, you all could attempt all the five questions within stipulated thirty seconds. Two were wrong, two were pass, and one was right. Well played, Doctor Vikrant Subramaniam. let me for the uh, sake of uh, participants and other viewers explain the answers so first question was loss of which chromosome in choroidal melanoma is a risk for poor metastatic survival it is chromosome 3 and double frequency ndr laser is used selectively to target melanin or pigmented cells in trabecular meshwork sclerocornea is up to 90% times bilateral Involvement of which structure differentiates endophthalmitis from pan? That is sclera. You said answered correct. In his chart, each small square on the grid subtends an angle of five degrees at a working distance of fifty centimeter. So now let's move to the section uh, to the file next one, and it is going to be with Dr. Ananya Goswami. Dr. Ananya Goswami, are you there with us? Yes, sir. Okay, what do you do? Can you tell, uh, introduce yourself in two sentences? Uh, sir, I recently completed my post graduation uh, from Dr. R P Center for Academic Sciences. Hmm. Good. And what are you doing now? And what do you aim to do? Uh, sir, my uh, I'm interested in uh, vitreo retinal surgery. I want to pursue fellowship in vitreo retinal surgery. Good. Best of luck. Okay. Thank you. Sir. So here starts your next thirty seconds. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Yeah. Study which showed the superiority of intravitreal bevacizumab in stage three plus ROP. Deep study. Yes. Inferior oblique secondary action is. Uh, elevation in adduction. Okay. Percentage of ganglion cell loss before visual field defects become manifest on white on white perimetry. Uh, fifty percent. Wrong. Diameter of full term normal infant cornea. Uh. Pass sir. Okay, you have exhausted your thirty seconds. Uh, so the fifth question will you can attempt it, but we will you will be not marked. Artificial tears are dash or smaller compared to normal tears. Hypo or smaller. Hi, hypo or smaller. Hyper or smaller. Hypo. It should be hypo. Okay. Yeah, hypo. So you could attempt four questions within thirty seconds. You answered two right. One wrong and one was passed. Well played, uh, Doctor Ananya. Now Thank let's you, for the benefit of viewers go through the answers. Study which showed the superiority of intravitreal bevacizumab in stage three plus ROP was a beat ROP trial. She answered correctly. 
inferior oblique second reaction is elevation she answered well correct 25 to 30 percentage of ganglion cells are lost before visual field defects become manifest on white on white perimetry and the diameter of full term normal infant cornea is 9 to 12.5 millimeter while artificial tears which we use are hypoosmolar compared to the normal tears now let's move on to the next uh, session topper that is shalin shah dr shalin have you joined us are you there with us yes sir okay can you introduce yourself in two uh, sentences okay uh, sir i'm a final year resident uh, at uh, guru nanak eye center new delhi very good mm -hmm. okay uh, from where are you where do you belong which place you hail from delhi yes, sir I, no sir i hail from gujarat vadodara okay shalin good congratulations and we are proud to have you with us playing with even seasoned uh, practitioners very good keep it up so here starts your next 30 seconds are you ready yes sir okay ganglion cell layer is dashed layer thick at foveola zero okay. correct most common site of lesion in argel robertson pupil uh, tectum of the midbrain wrong yes. yeah. okay. okay we take it percentage of edta used to treat band shape keratopathy pass okay 10 dash 2 program test how many points 56 wrong mm -hmm. this not huh. buber's classification is used for pass okay so well you played very well you could attempt all the you tried to attempt five questions within 30 seconds you answered two correct two pass and one was wrong okay so well played dr shalin so stay with us for the final results now let's move on to the next participant next uh, yeah before that it's my duty to inform the correct answers ganglion cell layer is zero layer it is absent at foveola and most common site of lesion in rj robertson pupil is sylvian aqueduct that is within midbrain 1.5 to 3 percentage of edta is used to treat band shaped keratopathy and 10 dash 2 program test 68 points while huber's classification is used for duan retraction syndrome well so now it's time for the last participant that is going to be dr benjan are you there with us uh, yes sir okay can you introduce yourself within two in uh, two sentences uh, sir i'm doing junior residency final year in advanced eye center chandigarh wow great fine w which place you hail from sir i'm from kathmandu nepal okay welcome welcome dr banjan it's so nice to have you with us so are you ready yes sir the rapid fire round yes, okay sir. here starts your next 30 seconds wavelength of transpupillary thermotherapy laser is pass okay clover leaf pattern on visual field is suggestive of no false positives correct no 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 sorry it's wrong Cornea plana is defined as corneal curvature less than dash diopter. 38 diopter. Wrong. Tertiary action of superior rectus muscle. Tertiary action. Pass. Pass. To diagnose tino, uveitis must occur within dash months of acute interstitial nephritis. Three months. No. Wrong. So you attempted all the five questions within your stipulated 30 seconds. Three were wrong, two were passed. So you didn't score anything. In fact, you lost two marks. So uh, fine, well played. Now uh, let's wait for the, uh, let's understand what were the answers. Wavelength of transpupillary thermotherapy is 810 nanometers. Clover leaf uh, pattern on visual field is suggestive of high false negatives. Cornea plana is defined as corneal curvature less than 43 diopters. Tertiary action of superior rectus muscle is adduction. And to diagnose tenu, uveitis must occur within 12 months of acute interstitial nephritis. Well, friends, the rapid we are through with the rapid fire uh, round. By the time we are sure uh, our team computes who are the winner, five winners of, of this seven people who came into rapid fire round, we will be having some chat with you. So do join us on the chat. So keep your audio as well as visual video inputs on all the participants. 
Remember, we are also available on Facebook as well as YouTube. You can avail it. So, and remember, the next quiz, the next episode would be on 3rd of October. Again, remember, it's the first Sunday of the month. So, it is going to be 3rd of October when we'll be having the second episode of our third season. So, now I'm stopping uh, sharing of my screen and we'll have a chat. I request Uma and uh, Dr. Uba, Madam, as well as Anurag to join us for a chat with these young wizards. Yes. I never left them, sir. We never left them. Yeah. We, uh, so all of you are requested you, yeah. to get your video uh, inputs on. All of you. All the participants who made it into the rapid fire round. Unless it's lunchtime already. I, th I think the participants are more eager to have prizes rather than a lunch. So, so who is this? Panchami. <laughs> Panchami, oh. okay. Uma, madam, we can chat with this wizards meanwhile till our results are out. Both of you, Anurag and... Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, the first thing uh, which I noticed the moment all these all these visits turned their video screens on was they're pretty relaxed. I didn't see any serious case anywhere. They're all relaxed and composed at the same time. Battling out in the field of ophthalmology, just the way you should be when you step into the OT, all scrubbed, going to start off your surgery, the first case of the day. Uh, that's how you should be, even if, even if it's after I mean, I'm just preparing you Apart from a few doctors who are already practicing consultants, we've been exposed to it. All the people who are really eager to, or you know, uh, preparing yourselves to step into the real world, that's how you should be. That's the message. Relaxed and yet composed, free, yet filled with thoughts and preparations. That's how you should be. So congratulations to all of you and uh, looking forward to seeing you in uh, many similar stages, in similar roles. We would love to welcome you all to the Brain Teasers family sometime in the future. Prashant sir, your opinions on that. I think a wonderful beginning for all of you. We would love to have you here on the on the platform. So you muted. You muted, sir. Sir, you muted, sir. Yeah. Dr. Ananya, can you get your video input on? We would like to see your faces. If the viewers are ready, eager to see who is Dr. Ananya. Okay. So it's so nice of uh, people. See, uh, if you notice it, Dr. Uma, Madam, as well as Dr. Anurag, these are not only the residents, but importantly, seasoned practitioners like us are still in fray, you know, for the uh, prize money. What do you say about that? See, the students are expected to know everything and anything because they have to write their exams and pass. What, what about the seasoned practitioners? See, yes, we have from Bangalore, Dr. Uh, Shetty, who attempted so well, who was a section uh, two winner. I think the victory virus, the victory virus is there. So whether you are a consultant or a student, I think that victory virus is something that we all want to have. That's one virus we want to have. Okay. Nene, Shetty, sir, you didn't get the questions from Uma, madam, being close to Karnataka, Mangalore and Bangalore. <laughs> So, I think Udpi is from. So, I, I don't know him. <laughs> okay, just pulling. So, so uh, uh, Panchmi, what do you want to do now? Sir, I am into a permanent government job. So, right now, I am planning to continue this and maybe later, sometime later, start my own private practice. Is it something you you thinking about already or it's something that's in the pipeline or it's something you just so, no, answer no, no. because you have put a question across? <laughs> so just answer and I've not really thought about it right now. Then think. Then uh, think. Yeah. That's yeah. where... There's actually that's... too much competition in private practice in Delhi. So <laughs> oh, forget about that. This, this competition everywhere. This competition for oxygen as well. That doesn't stop us from living. That yeah. doesn't stop us from breathing. Yeah. So, no, it's a good thought that. she's continuing. Uh, she, see, my wife is a nephrologist, but she, she decided to cater to the poor and needy, unlike uh, we who were only Rajvaidyas, rather Anurag. Or same way, look at Uma, madam. She has done a mobile job of teaching. So, I think uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Panchami has every right to do that. And it's good it people is. like this with so much of knowledge come into the government field and do serve and teach students. It's really, uh, we are proud of you, Dr. Panchami. Thank you, sir. 
I was just saying that if you have plans, then think about it while age is on your side. when i do such quizzes i i i want i like to be updated with all these specialities so i like I, it's very informative for me and it, it goes back to my pg days and i remember those things and it obviously okay. it takes some time for me to remember those things because it's been a it's been two years though not long but yes i really enjoyed the quiz oh that's nice i get got questions from all uh, branches of class c uh, cat track everything besides that okay and what are your plans for future or your set of uh-huh. Um, I'm, I haven't uh, thought very far, but uh, after completing my MCH, so we do that now. Uh, I'll be going back to Delhi. I'm from Delhi, basically, and then looking for a job. So you're going to give a competition to punch me, <laughs> ma'am? She's my younger ma'am. sister. I'm your sister. I was about to ask that. I was about to ask. Oh that. my God! <laughs> That's a coup, PR. Both sisters. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So the next brain teasers will have a question: mutation in which gene allows two sisters to win two rounds in the same quiz in the same season? Yeah, great! That's amazing! That's amazing! That's amazing! I mean, I must clap for you guys. Yeah, that's amazing. So the academy of flows in the family, it seems. <laughs> so we are only two doctors in our family. Oh, good, but we are well inspired. I think. Well, uh, this Panchami appears to be senior to you, correct? Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. So she is so in she Chandigarh right now. Yourself. I'm in Delhi. Yeah, you inspired her into ophthalmology. That's a great thing. You did. Good. Keep it up. Keep inspiring more people around you, Panchami. We expect same thing even from Nikita uh, about ophthalmology. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. sir. Doctor Kalin, hello, Doctor Kalin. Yes, sir. What are you saying, boy? Gujarat, what are you saying? Sir, Gujarat. Okay. <laughs> मोदी जी के एरिया के आदमी हो यार थोड़ा डर के बात कर रहे हैं अनुराग के मुंह से बात नहीं निकल रही है अनुराग समथिंग फॉर दिस गाय आई थिंक देर आर टू एक्सट्रीमली इन्फ्लुएंशियल लीडर्स इन द इंडियन पॉलिटिकल सिनेरियो राइट नाउ वन हेल्स फ्रॉम योर स्टेट एंड दर हेल्स फ्रॉम माइन सो दैट्स वन कॉमनैलिटी स्टोरी <laughs> sir it's the quiz uh, i mean i have been a uh, quizzer in my ug life and this is the first quiz i am appearing in my pg life so i'm excited to be back to quizzing this great, brilliant great. so what do you do i mean sir, apart I'm from a, quizzing so i'm a finally a resident uh, and uh, so he has to study yeah. anurag yeah i study <laughs> <laughs> uh, he was winner in a previous uh, season also for few episodes correct shalin uh, one episode uh, i was a section winner yes yes It's very good shalin good good keep it up we will like to see your face on and off on the our uh, screens again now now coming to dr shetty dr sadanand shetty you said you are a practitioner yes sir i am a glaucoma consultant in nn bangalore sir. yes so nn is a pro- doing my- yes sir and then it's a place which churns out uh, research papers like a, a factory i believe how many papers yeah, it's a shaolin temple of ophthalmologists now yeah 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 so how many papers do you have to your credit no sir in the, in the pipeline few papers are in the pipeline great yeah. uma madam you can ask him something in kannad enchi ullara i'll ask him 
<laughs> Great. Give us a conversion. Yes. It was the Tulu language. <laughs> Tulu is a local Mangalorean and Uti language. I, I'm not well versed with it. I'm Marathi speaking, but I've learned a bit of uh, Tulu. So I asked him in Tulu, how are you? That's all. Okay, okay. So, so thank you, Dr. Sadanand, for being with us. Uh, Dr. Venkat Subramaniam. Able to hear you, sir. No, he, he's frozen for a moment actually. He's just, sir's yeah, connectivity yeah. is a little on the store side. Yes, sir. I think he's back. Okay, Dr. Venkat Subramaniam, you are in Bangalore, correct? You are into practice. Yes, yes very much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me, but there were, if I see the number of people who are participating, very few of them are into active practice. What keeps you going and studying and trying to compete with these PGI guys and whatnot, AIMS guys? You are competing and rubbing shoulders with them. When do you study out of your practice? It was, uh, I was a quiz master for our BOS quiz last time. Okay. Good, <laughs> and good. Uh, in a way, the brain teasers have been an inspiration uh, because I've been following up uh, with your uh, quizzes and Kumar uh, is there. So, you know, I have worked with Kumar earlier at NN. I was a retina surgeon at NN earlier. Okay. Uh, the way back 2002, 2004, uh, started my practice and uh, it's a completely uh, solo practice, but I do have uh, subordinates working with me and I love teaching and I think uh, being a part of the quiz is just enjoying and learning more because unless you learn, you can't teach. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you, Venkat Subramaniam. In fact, you are an inspiration to me because I hardly study As, and I always have an excuse that I'm too busy in my practice. <laughs> you are indeed. Yeah, this is, I know this that. Is, <laughs> Everyone knows this that. is actually a kind of an inspiration which you receive and uh, that stays with you for two minutes. The moment the computer is shut off, then you're back to business and <laughs> you're back to. So, did I hear correctly that you are in practice since 2004? Yes, very much. So, so you, you passed out your post graduation in which year, sir? Uh, I finished my post graduation in 2000. Certificates ready. So, apart from how you study and how you um, do your practice at the same time, how do you manage to look the way you are? You, you're looking like uh, somebody who is hardly into practice, maybe for a couple of years at the most. I would put my money on a couple of years. You don't look like somebody who's in practice <laughs> for 20 years now. Uh, thanks uh, for the compliment, but uh, you know, uh, being in touch with all the PGs and everyone, I think that just makes you uh, want to be in your PG days always. I think that uh, that really uh, is uh, always inspiring. And yes, uh, you know, lovely. So how you stay young you. is what's the young is what you are trying to say. Yeah, here. very true. Right. <laughs> okay. So now we move on to the last person, that is Dr. Banjana. Yeah. Did I spell your uh, name right? It's Bianjana. Uh, just pronounce it for me once more. Bianjana. Okay, Banjana. Where are you from? You said you are from Nepal. How come you are uh, now in uh, India for your post-graduation? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So which year? I'm in final year, sir. So how do you find the culture of our country compared to yours? It's quite similar, sir. It's similar. Yes, sir. So you are going to go back to Nepal or stay back with us? Uh, so first I will have to go back to Nepal for licensing exam and all. And mm -hmm. uh, I'll come back for fellowship. I mm -hmm. want to come back. Some guy from uh, India didn't hijack you for uh, permanently <laughs> for India? No, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask what does your name mean? Janjana? Uh, it means a, the power of goddess. Wow. Okay. Okay. Good, good, good. So it's great. And which uh, uh, which stream affects you, uh, attracts you the most to pursue a fellowship in? So I am thinking about joining Oculoplasty and Squint. Wow. Both of them together? Uh, I mean, yes, one after the followed, other? Yeah, one followed by another. Oh, See, someone is uh, mimicking you. You also did two long-term fellowship, if I am not wrong. <laughs> I so, did, sir, but that's one of them was uh, Ireland Antra segment and the other was Bidoff and Strabismus. Uh, I've never, I mean, Bidoff is at times, I mean, international, some of the centers, pediatric ophthalmology is clubbed with, I mean, squint particularly is clubbed with oculoplasty. So 
uh, I think you should look uh, towards one of those institutes because that will give you both at the same time. But in here in India, you have to do both of them uh, separately. So that's three and a half to four years straight. <laughs> you prepare to invest that much of time, fine. Most welcome. So we have Dr. Ananya Goswami. Ananya, can you get your video on? Well, actually, my video is on. It's not working for some reason. I don't know why. Okay, we are missing you. Uh, Ananya, can you tell me uh, something about us? Anurag, can you quiz her a bit? Uma as well as, Uma Madam as well. I won't ask you what your name means, obviously. You are <laughs> one and only. There's nobody else like you. Like no other is what Ananya means. So uh, you okay. definitely proved it on this platform here today. So what do you do, Ananya? Sir, I recently from uh, Dr. R.P. Center for Ophthalmic Sciences AIM. Uh, currently, I'm preparing for pursuing a fellowship. Uh, I'm more interested in vitreo retinal surgery. Someone to look at me. Eh? I'm impressed because I'm primarily a vitreo retinal surgeon as well as Dr. Shilpi, who is my colleague. Both of us are vitreo retinal surgeons. So if the participants ever say that they are going to pursue retina, we feel we have done the job. Impressed enough. Absolutely. <laughs> and that's major. That's what majority of the participants do say over the years that they're interested in vitro retina. It's a wonderful branch of science. So all the best to you. Do pursue your fellowship and get trained, and then uh, do wonders. I mean, that's all I can say. Uma, ma'am. Thank you so much. Ah, uh, now she's back. We yeah. are able to see you now, Ananya. She's beautiful. She was hiding her yeah. face. <laughs> <laughs> Ask what are the hobbies that each one of you uh, has? Because we keep ourselves busy with ophthalmic practice, teaching, research, whatever. But somewhere we have to have some hobbies, as Dr. Anurag was telling us in the morning, that he has a habit of keeping fit. That's his main uh, hobby. So what is your hobby, Ananya? Study, I believe. Uh, ma'am, uh, when, ma'am, during my free time, I enjoy cooking. That's okay. how I oh. relax. So, Ananya. what exactly is your address, Ananya? <laughs> Drop me the postal address in the chat box. Yeah, of course, I was also asking the same. You would, you would repent this statement, I tell you. <laughs> Chala, good. Okay. So, moving on so, to the others, your hobbies, please. Uh, sir, uh, uh, during my free time, I enjoy cooking. And uh, I... I I used to dance previously, but I do not get much time. Okay, great. So I, I think we had a good chat with all the participants who made it into the rapid fire round. Now we are ready with the uh, final winners, rather I should say. So so the I would go from the ascending order in the ascending order. So the winner number five is Dr. Benjana. Congratulations, Dr. Benjana. And this is the certi is a certificate for you. Clap for them. Dr. Benjana, where are you? So yes, sir. Thank you. You are winner sir. number five. Congratulations once more. Thank you, sir. Now the winner number four is Panchami Gupta. Panchami, congratulations. Thank you, sir. Congratulations. Good. Winner number three is a man from Modi land. I have to give some prize to, uh, you know, that particular state. Otherwise, I would be thrown out of our country. So, Shalin. Thank you, sir. Three. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. And then comes again the sister here. All Guptas are taking away all the credit. So, winner number two is Nikita Gupta. Congratulations, Nikita. So, both of your sisters you, must have been so proud for your parents. I envy your parents. I would like to be in their shoes one day. And hmm? I saw Panchmi uh, clapping louder than she clapped for herself. Oh. So that's uh, tremendous. That's a very, very good gesture indeed. Yeah. And just guess who is the winner of the two days for uh, winner one? Yeah, it's none other than Ananya Goswami. Oh. Congratulations, Ananya. And you said, well, Anurag, what was that uh, Ananya means? Like no other. Like no other. And she proved her name today. So congratulations. And somewhere, somewhere her roots are uh, uh, dug deep into the eastern part of the country. She's a Goswami. So she obviously is from West Bengal. So that makes me doubly proud. Proud of you, Ananya. You can Sir, I'm actually Assamese. Assamese. I'm from Assam. All right. Yes, sir. I'm, All right. I'm from Assam. 
like hindi chini odia bengali assami bye bye <laughs> so winners once more it's dr benjana dr panchami dr shalin dr nikita and dr ananya of course we are all the winners and you will be given the gift voucher which will be mailed to your respective addresses which you have to share on this chat box okay so congratulations once more and we are very proud to have intelligent people like you and uh, it made us as a team of brain teasers proud of having such a brilliant wizard people with us playing the uh, brain teasers on the first uh, episode of session 3 so thank you once more thank you again to uh, dr anurag and dr uma for wonderfully conducting uh, the quiz all the quiz questions which were tough were all devised by these two people i am not the culprit you know i am always a, a very student friendly type of a guy i don't devise such type of a difficult questions anurag uma madam yes, dr shilpi these are the people who were trying to quiz you hard okay so coming back thank you shilpi dr uma and dr anurag for wonderful uh, conducting this episode 1 and of course my sincere thanks to, once again to microvision for sponsoring this particular episode and we hope to have a long um, 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 uh, journey so, along with them in the future as well and of course my thanks to numeratic team sai and manjula for having a episode which was without any interruptions thank you so hope to see you again on 3rd of mm-hmm. october mm-hmm. Thank you. congratulations so bye bye take, take care and stay safe bye bye thank you sir thank bye bye thank, thank you so much bye bye thank you bye bye Thank you Prashant sir are thank you not